So I just did uh, Steve's new podcast with Michael and Curly. Oh, that's right. I forgot you were recording right before. That's so cool. How was it? It was amazing. Yeah. It was great. Uh, good. It's talking good. Sopranos, right? Yeah, we're doing Talking Sopranos. We're yeah. doing good. This was our, our seventh one. Two have aired. We started oh, last Monday. It's going good. You know, we'll see. You enjoying it? Are you? Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of work, man. You got to... You know, you got to watch the episode, write notes, then watch it again. I don't remember nothing, you know. Yeah, it's a yeah. Lot of work. You know, you Michael know, knows all the shots and all that shit. I watch it like a right. fan. Yeah. You know, I just started watching it for the first time, like ever. And I truly feel like I'm witnessing it like a fan. Same, yeah. like there's been enough time that I forgot enough things, but it's still, so I can remember certain things, but I'm watching it being like, it was hard when you were in it to really understand how amazing it was. Yeah, you know what I mean? And But when you can sit and watch now, I'm watching it being like, I am, this is so cool that I got to be a part of this. This is so good. You know, this one we watched today was Robert. Number seven, it was fantastic. And then that college episode is great. So good. Yeah. You're so coming amazing. on this week, right? I am. I am. We won't, you know, we'll talk about pieces. You know, like with the guests so far, we've had two guests, Robert and Michael Raspoli, and we just have a conversation and then we go over the episode, not to get you guys in it. So right, you don't have right. to go, I got to watch and all that. Right. Okay. Good. Steve, how um how how many times have you watched? Have you have you seen the season more than once? When was the last time you were kind of you had the chance to sit down and watch the episodes? And and what's it like now? I haven't watched them in twenty years, and and I don't come on until the second episode of the second season. So mine haven't even hit. So I I asked Michael all kinds of questions, and. I watch it. I've got to watch it twice. And it's a lot of work, but it's it's amazing show. I'll tell you that. I mean, yeah. now that you look back, there's so much you forget how funny it is. The show is yes. laugh out loud funny. Yes, yes, I laugh did. I did loud. forget how funny it was. You know, and Michael knows all the shit because he was in the writer's room. So he knows that stuff. But, oh, uh, that's so cool. Yeah. And everyone has agreed to come on. I think I think David's coming on. Great, yeah, Michael. You know, Michael talks to him, and yeah, uh, you know, we got you know the the writers Terry and Mitch and Robin and you guys and you know, so, you know most of the cast, not everybody. You know, that's really cool. So, so I heard someone told me yesterday a uh, fact that during this quarantine, um, Game of Thrones and Sopranos are the two most watched shows during the quarantine right now, like in the world. Really? I oh, never wow. saw the Game of Thrones, not one minute. Me neither. Me neither. neither. Not one episode. I thought it was about gladiators. It's not about gladiators. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't. Gladiators I think it's about there. like dragons. Dragons? And, like knights, knights and uh, dragons, right? It was very right popular. Talking? It's a huge show, though. It's a, oh, it's a yeah. great show. You know, at the core of it, there's a really cute, uh, incest love story. I think that's <laughs> at the center of the whole show. Oh, that, that's yeah. a right. cute, a cute incest story. I'm, I'm, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pass on that. But they're showing <laughs> it for free. They're streaming it for free for people. HBO oh, Go, I think. Uh, Sex in cool. the City and Game of Thrones and HBO. I mean, and Sopranos and a whole bunch of other shows. The Wire. Yeah. HBO's the best. HBO's so good. I mean, and it's so funny to be talking with you because I, I feel like HBO really became HBO once the Sopranos came on. I mean, I remember watching shows before it, but you know, I'm sure you guys were, were there for what, what do you guys think of the show being on HBO when you were on it? Was it, you know, right now we hold HBO on such a high sort of like esteem and, and we, we kind of consider it to be prestige TV what was the thought of you guys being on HBO kind of at that time? Well, it wasn't the HBO that you see now, but yeah, you know, I they had so cool. They had Sex in the City, they had The Wire, and they treated us great, right? Yes. I yeah. mean, so HBO great. does it like nobody. So great. Else, you know, we uh, were we, so spoiled. We would go to the Emmys. 
the so SAG Awards. Time. You could bring a guest. They fly you out first class. I mean, I remember yep. uh, my first time. We get off the plane, and there was other cast members on the plane, and there's five, you know, limos waiting out front at yep. the airport. Everybody gets in a limo. We're staying at the Peninsula, the best hotel. At the at the beginning, there was no uh, <laughs> per diem. You just signed to your room right, until right. some people took advantage. I won't yes. mention any names, Joey Pants. But uh, <laughs> oh, he had a birthday party for his kid by the pool and signed it to the room. And then after that, we got like, you know, whatever, whatever it was a day. But before that, yeah. just signed. It was open ended. Oh, yeah. Good. HBO treated you really good. All kinds of parties. Oh, so good. Stuff. It was, uh, and then, uh, listen, H, uh, a lot of people when the Soprano season was over, they would cancel HBO. Yeah. yeah. And then when it came back, you know, wow. we kind of put them on the map. Uh, Sex in the City, The Wire were there. But before that, I don't think they had a whole yeah. lot. Old movies and stuff. There was one night where we were all drinking at the bar on the peninsula, and it was after uh, they gave us, like, I think they gave everybody, like, $250 a day, which is incredible. Like, that's... that's yeah. Awesome. yeah. So um, there was, like, 20 of us at the bar drinking. It was, like, after the Emmys or something, and we're... They, like, closed it just for us, and we're drinking for hours and hours, and everybody left. I'm not going to say who. It was me and one other actor left at the end of the night. And uh, the person came over with the tab, with like the bill. And it was an insane. Oh, yeah. Amount. Well, this is really overly expensive there too, right? Yeah. Right. And there's people like who are just walking into the bar saying like, yeah, put it on my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't, you don't know they, didn't, they didn't flinch HBO, right? No, not at all. So, um. That that other actor took it and he asked me how to spell the last name of one of our producers. <laughs> and, and was it Johnny V? Johnny V. I'm, I'm not gonna say who. It was somebody, and they signed uh uh the, the one of the producers' names on the check and just gave it back. Like by the way, super confident. Like didn't but wasn't like oh my god, what should I do? Done it before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Done it before. Like, That's funny. This is how you handle this? I also know. Uh, and I won't mention who, but they brought their dry cleaning. One Somebody's wife uh, on their coat, their winter coat, got candle wax, and the dry cleaner in the neighborhood wanted like 250. You're not hitting your kids, right, Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> How funny would that be? Who are you swatting you? over there? No, like a mosquito or something. Uh, I'm so sorry. I must be so she, distracting. I'm sorry. I'm done. I'll leave it. Uh, lost it. On day 30 of the quarantine, she started hitting those kids. <laughs> yeah, I would have done it sooner. <laughs> I, 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 won't lie, I won't. I'm not going to lie and say I haven't thought about it. <laughs> I haven't done it, but I'm not going to lie and say I have not thought about it. And so or they just both, leaving the door open. Are you home now? You're home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. And now they, they they extended the quarantine another month? Till my birthday. May 15th, you guys. All might right. be a big we'll coming celebrate. out. Happy birthday. We'll be back here drinking on May yes. 15th. So wait, what what were you saying? So somebody... So they, somebody brought yeah, their winter coat. Somebody's wife, I won't mention the name, brought their dirty laundry to the peninsula because it was $250 their local cleaners here in New York City uh, to get the candle wax. So they brought their, they sent it to the dry cleaner at the hotel, and that screwed us up, too. It was like oh. a huge bill. Some oh. people took advantage. You know? Yeah, no. It wasn't Joey Pants. When we, when, we had, <laughs> when we had unlimited money to spend at those things, it was before I really started drinking. So, like, we I was young still. Yeah, I would be, like, ordering, you know, two cheeseburgers and that was like right crazy, you know hey hbo yeah. does it right i don't know if they do anymore all those people are gone but they used to do it oh right. they treated us so kindly yeah. they, like family and it was so nice so For nice sure that was good so when, when you were what how old were you when you started working at the comedy club in vegas i moved to vegas in 1980 before both of you were born yeah uh i, I grew up in brooklyn 
I graduated school, then I moved to Vegas. First, I delivered pizza. My, my roommates, we moved out, three of us together. They were dealers. And uh, I was making more money than I'm delivering pizza. Wow. So I did that. Then I became a bouncer at Paul Anker. You know Paul Anker is? Yeah, yeah. You know, big singer. Paul Anker had a nightclub. I was a bouncer. That was like the top club, you know. Uh, right. Comparable. Like the Studio 54 of cool. Vegas at the time. They didn't have any clubs in the casinos then. That didn't happen until oh. 1991 at the Rio. There was no clubs. What was Only, the first one at the Rio? The, they had their big nightclub, but the Rio was the first one inside a casino. Before that, no nightclubs. So wow. the nightclubs were out, you know, they were just separate, you know, out in regular local nightclubs. Uh, so I worked at Paul Angus Club. All kinds of celebrities came in there, blah, blah, blah. Wore a tuxedo every night, all that crap. Then I worked at another hot club. The brewery was open 24 hours. I would leave there at 9 in the morning. The place was packed. 9 a.m., dance floor packed. And that was all? Then you get, I would go out at 9 a.m. then, come home about 3, 4 in the afternoon, sleep, and do it all over again. I did that for wow. many, wow. many, many years. So then uh, I uh, got a job in the hotel, the Riviera, running the comedy club. That's where I started acting. Uh, some of the comics put me in stuff. and. I became an executive there and all that kind of stuff, you know? So that that's such a cool story. Yeah, that was it. Uh, they, the, uh, a lot of the comics were doing sketches. And I, and like I said, I was dabbling in the acting like a hobby and, and they started putting me in some of their stuff. And then I came to New York for a wedding and then I auditioned for the show and I came on, Second episode of the second season. That was my first episode. Wow. I wore the fat I suit. I didn't know this. Yes. Yeah. The first two seasons, I wore a fat suit. I remember yeah. reading the script and I'm going, you know, Tony's got all these fat jokes. I'm not that much fatter than Jim. So I thought maybe they cast <laughs> the wrong guy. Right? We, were, we were close to the same size. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then I put a fat, I had to get fitted for a fat suit. So I went to wardrobe. David was there. For some reason, Lorraine was there, and they were putting all this fat, a, a fake fat ass on me, big fat stomachs, and they were trying all these different things, you know. Wow. So when you were working at when you were working at the comedy club, like who was who was the guy to watch then? Who you knew was going to be huge? Uh, who worked? Well, I tell you who worked for me, and they were nobodies then. Ellen, Rosie O'Donnell, David Spade. Rob Schneider, Drew Carey, uh, wow. Richard Belzer, Bill Maher. I mean, it could go on and on, you know. Chris Rock, he was not as famous as he was, but he was getting there. Yeah. And then I started booking these guys in a bigger room, like a thousand seater. And, and that was the first time these guys, now a lot of them are famous in the big room. And Dennis Leary, and Jeff Dunham and uh, Kevin James and Ray Romano and D.L. Ugly and Damon Waynes. And uh, we could just go on and on. They all work for me, man. Gilbert and they all, when you see them now, like in this other kind of like chapter of your life, you all remember each other? Yeah, yeah. They're pretty, except for Ellen. Ellen, uh, Ellen when I went to the first Emmys, I, uh, I don't ask me why, because I never go up to people. Yeah. And, uh, it was my first Emmys. Maybe I was excited. I had just gotten on the show, right? Uh, we were shooting in July, and then this was September. And right. The Sopranos got nominated for all those Emmys the first season. They were nice enough to invite me and my wife. Big deal to me. What the hell do I know, right? I go up to Ellen. She's there. She's talking to someone. I say, excuse me, Ellen, I don't know if you remember me, but you work for me at the Riviera, da-da-da. Dismiss me. Like I was a piece of gum on her shoe. Shocking. I have never heard a good story about Ellen. Yeah. And I, I don't, I'm you know, not she, saying anything. I've just never well, heard. You can say it. Say it. I've You're never in a dungeon. She won't come they down had a there, great David. experience meeting Ellen. That's, that's it. And so I've she heard, just dismissed me, and I was so embarrassed. I kind of slinked oh, away. Oh, that's such a bad feeling. But everybody oh. else, you know, everybody else. I mean, Chris Rock, I always see at the Nick Games. And 
seen yeah. Jim Carrey and all these guys. Damon Wayans hired me. Uh, David Spade, you know. So I, David Spade hired me. I was in Joe Dirt. I had a little role. That's what I mean. It must be so cool for them to yeah. see you being like, oh, wait, you're doing our thing now. Like, let's help each other out. This Absolutely. is great. I they've love been, that. They've been nice. And then a lot of the comics who were kind of big shots, I've gone on to a better career than them. So <laughs> <laughs> they're not all happy I about it. I love it. it. <laughs> yeah, well. But they all worked. I mean, and then I booked big acts, you know, music acts, the Beach Boys and, and uh, stuff like that. Sinatra played the hotel. Wow. Uh, wow. I would go down every night and see him. He didn't wow. work, you know, he worked at the hotel, not for me. I would go down. I must have seen him 25 times. I would go wow. sit in the back of the room, and uh, Laura came. We met him one night. He was very drunk. Uh, we were at a party, like 25 people, and I called Laura, you know, and I said, uh, we weren't married yet. It's like 1987. I said, Sinatra's coming. Come on down. It's 2 a.m., 2.30. She takes a shower, gets dressed, comes down to the riv, and uh, it's like a big U-shaped table, and he's really mean. He's nasty, and he's yelling at Don Rickles, and he comes in, he's got like a half a bottle of Jack Daniels, and he's wearing a members-only jacket. I don't know if you know what that is. It's yeah, yeah. Got, it's got Frank on it, like you didn't know who he was. Yeah. And he, he wasn't mean to me. We took a picture, and he was fine, and then Laura said, hold on, Frank, I want to get in there. And he was nice, but he was yelling at Don Rickles, and he was he was drunk by the time he got there. We got out of there like 4, 4.30 in the morning. Wow. It was only wow. about 25 people at the party, you know. You were young when this happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I moved there. I was 22, so wow. I started working at the hotel about, I guess I was 26, 27, like that. You you said you grew up that you were in Brooklyn before that, Brooklyn. What, yeah. So what what made you move? Had what were you? You know, doing? I had nothing going on. We you know I grew up on welfare. I had no money. My father was a half a ship bum. Uh, we had seven of us in a little apartment. As soon as I graduated college, I was gone. And a friend yeah. of mine moved first, and and uh, I was right behind them. You know, mm -hmm. we drove. Hey, out. can I just can I just say you need to make like your life story into a movie. I'm enjoying this story so much. Am I alone who's gonna, here? I feel like who's, which fat guy is going to play me? Who do we got? <laughs> Wait to see. Let's you. You know who you. could play me? Rosie Jeff O'Donnell could play. Yeah, me. right. <laughs> <laughs> and Ellen can play Dean Martin. She'd win the. She win the Oscar for that. Yeah, yeah. She oh, you know, you know who could play you? Uh, Chaz Bono. They. <laughs> yeah. I actually work with Chaz Bono. Yeah. So very, uh, it, uh, very funny. He's funny. Did you see the Curb Enthusiasm? Yeah, just, yeah. just watch it. He really funny. Great. Yeah. Well, I was on Secret Life of the American Teenager. Yeah. And, uh, he did an episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very funny. So, uh, well, I'm just enjoying this story is what I mean. And I think it's, it's uh, worthy of a movie. All right. Maybe someday. Who knows? Who do, maybe David Chase will write the Steve Sharippa story. Oh, oh yeah. I like it in that tone. <laughs> Tassim could play Break Michael Imperioli. Michael. <laughs> yeah, I got the nose for it. Um, <laughs> did you, uh, did you, um, do you, how do you feel about the new Sopranos movie, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'm what sure it's going to be great. You know, yeah. do you know I don't know. David's about it a that great writer. I can't mm -hmm. imagine it being anything else. And, no, it's going to be amazing. And Michael Gandolfini, he's, he did a nice job on the deuce. Uh, and he's a nice kid and, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure it's going to be good. I can't imagine it won't be good. No, it won't. It'll be. I w are they going to push it back because of all this, you think? I would, I would think maybe. I don't know. I guess it's, it depends what happens in the next couple months. Yeah. yeah. September, you know. What's your, I mean, you're in, you're in New York right now, right? Yeah. What's, what's, what's it like for you during the yeah. uh, quarantine right now? How are you holding up? Well, I go out uh, an hour a day to walk, maybe an hour, 15 minutes. Uh, we've been in. My daughter does most of the shopping. She lives with us. There's three of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's dead, man. I live downtown, yeah. you know. Uh, you could shoot a cannon, you know. Oh. You know, there's nobody around. I went for my walk this morning. Tribeca is empty. But there wow. are... I got to tell you, there's still people not listening. Hmm. They're still not wearing masks. 
They're still bunched up together. It's ridiculous. I mean, but it's empty out there, you know, and it's kind of scary. So many people yeah. have died. I, I know a couple people that have passed away. I have oh. some friends that have gotten it. Uh, luckily, they've recovered. And it's, uh, this is the worst. I, I mean, at least in California, you're spread out, you know. It's a, got a backyard, maybe, a little spread totally. out. Oh, totally. You I know, think about people in New York all the time because we could complain about or just feel, you know, tight and small because we're with each other in a house. But the truth is we have a lot of space. We can ride our bike around the block, you yeah. know. My kids put ninja masks because they think it's cool so they don't argue with me like we could have a backyard to play in a pool to swim in like if if i didn't have all this space especially with kids on top yeah. of me i don't know what sure. i do you know and i have a pretty good size apartment for new york but you know, yeah yeah still an apartment you know we're you're, and apartment. you're on top of it there's a lot of people we and we can go outside my- and you know, my wife goes out and runs in the morning. My daughter does her thing. She, my daughter goes shopping, and and then we've been busy with the podcast and doing press. So luckily, uh, we're really busy. busy. With that. So luckily, it's something to do, man. You know, we were. I was shooting Blue Bloods. You know, I've been on that since 2015, and uh, we got shut down. We got shut down at, uh, with two days left in the 20th episode. So, oh know, my god, episodes, yeah. Are they talking, uh, and giving you any sort of like, uh, idea of when you guys will be back to work, or is it everyone just kind of you know, walking around? We, we're the same scheduled thing? to go back in July, you know, that was the normal schedule, but yeah, right, who knows, man, I don't know. I mean, what happens? I mean, it's not like turning the light on, okay, everybody back in the pool, yeah. everything's fine now. So I, I don't know how you go back to work, what you do. People come in from other states, not quarantine. What's there? Like eight states, not quarantine still? Yeah. Right. You know, I don't know. I don't know what happens. What do you think I want to be in California, you know? What do you think of the job Cuomo's doing over there? I think Cuomo's good. Yeah. I like him. He's common sense. That's all I need now is common sense. De Blasio's an asswipe. <laughs> a complete ass wipe of a human. I'm not. I'm not just joking. He's well, I, don't know. Yeah. I believe he's it. a terrible leader. He's not a leader at all. You know. So you, you know you need uh, someone. And, and Cuomo tells the facts. He's not lying. So you know, in moments like, like in moments like these, the true leaders shine because you you start to gravitate towards the energy of those that hold you know, information, but support, but are honest. Like those are the people that just come up from the, you know, the mess. I agree. Yeah. I mean, even, even friends wise, you see who's sure. you know, friends here. You see, right. I mean, all of us, you know, uh, you see well, some Cass- people. Cass- doing- Castle won't text me back this whole quarantine. So I'm really seeing true colors, you know? Well, his service is probably bad in his bunker, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's like eight inches of cement. Really? I'm uh, being dead serious. Where are you? What is that? Is that where you live? That's your house? Uh, No, this is just I a like background. I like your other background. I like you like my other one? one? Yeah, yeah, I started the... Oh, that's uh, fake. Oh. Yeah. He's, this uh, is- you oh. tricky guys. <laughs> Robin. <laughs> I thought this one. Rob, I you look like that looks like a still from the movie Twilight. Like I it does not that. look like it. It doesn't look like the friend. What season was growing that? His hair out. I, I don't know what season it was, but I remember uh, Tony Sirico. Oh me, uh, my god! Uh, what is oh, oh. Robin Hood? No, no, no. The Van Helsing. <laughs> That's what he called, and then for like that whole year, it was everybody. That's hilarious. Tony's so that, still in Brooklyn, I guess. He's in Brooklyn. He's been quarantined for five years. Van Helsing. <laughs> That's very funny. What season? That's got to be five or six. You're a little older. Than for uh, sure. Oh, my God. That's so funny. Wait, Hassam, if you could How do I not know that? If you could find it. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> That's season one, two. That's an iconic shot, Casim. That is I know, I know. Shot. You guys are holding beautiful. that box of Cheerios. So well, you know what's an iconic shot? Episode uh, where Jackie April dies. I think it's four at the funeral when Tony winks at uh, 
uh, AJ, and you look over. You're looking at AJ at the end at the at the cemetery, and and Tony oh, winks oh, at AJ. Yeah. Those are two we talked about it. Oh, Those are yeah. two iconic pictures. Totally, I know. Really you. I just watched it for the first time. Yeah. So powerful, so powerful. And you know, where are you at in your rewatch? I'm at episode ten of the. First oh season. wow! You be, I, I'm just. I just finished seven, so you're a little further ahead. I started a month ago, though. <laughs> So you're gonna have I've, plenty. You got another like, month to go. I know. I have kids. I've been tired, and I sprinkled in like Tiger King in the middle of it. So, but now I'm committed to just when I can watch TV at Soprano. And if they interrupt you, exactly. <laughs> you saw my move. You saw my big move. That backhand. Here. That was a backhand. Oh, yeah. We're all we're all it's big been into perfected. We're all big into TV. What have you been watching besides the Sopranos? Do you? I do like you Curb Your Enthusiasm. Way? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I like Shit's Creek. Yeah. Yes. Really I funny. You know, watch Catherine that Robin. O'Hara is, oh. Catherine O'Hara is gold. Funny, yeah. funny, funny. Oh. You should watch that. I, we just finished that. Uh, I like Billions, which I think is coming. The Kaminsky Method I like. Uh, I didn't watch this Tiger thing. Is it that good? You got to stick with it. It's just a whole different breed of humans yeah like it's just like a really different type of people but like people that are poor and come from like abuse and terrible backgrounds that find like love in these large animals and then it becomes an obsession and then it's money and then it's selling so it's like dark and twisted but you start to really like feel for the people too do you agree I yeah, haven't seen I it. Think it's, I think it's the opposite, though, of what you said, where it's like you have to stick with it. Like, I think it comes out of the gate strong. It, for sure. Oh, yeah. for sure. It's so good. And then for me, like, episode five, six, seven, it kind of just became like this. I didn't even finish the last episode yet. I, I have a full last the last episode. episode was not good to me. The last like, three episodes, like, they, they tried to make, I think a big thing right now is, like, anything like where people want to solve crimes and th and they took it away from like the characters and into like, yeah. Yeah. Art. I think as, as an actor, when you watch it, there's so many characters that you can't not like. It. I got to look at it. Yeah. That's a good point. And then I watched this that's documentary on baseball from Ken Burns. I've been watching oh, cool. that. It's older, but I've been watching that. And that's it, man. I mean, I'm watching the rewatching the Sopranos. So what right. do you see people not doing in New York when you're like, oh, they're not following the rules? So, you know, there's this big path, right? You know, you could actually walk around the island of Manhattan. Yeah. Right? So I live all the way downtown. Uh, and there's a path from the east side goes past Battery Park into Battery Park City. On that path, there's tons of people. Three, four people deep walking together, kids on scooters, kids on skateboards, no masks, no gloves. I mean, uh, people running. Okay, people riding bikes. But, you know, wear your stuff, man. You know, you know, stay away. You could still walk. So I haven't even gone there. They're still in the park playing. They're still yeah. playing soccer. They're throwing a football around. There was 20 kids during the week, you know, uh, wrestling and playing in the park. They were playing basketball up until a few days ago, and uh, de Blasio, high, you know, ordered them to take the rims off the parks. So what mm -hmm. does that cost? So oh, they had to wow. take the rims so they don't play basketball in the park. Every single one. So, so not everybody, I think, is taking it serious enough, you know. I mean, this morning I saw, like, three guys – workers it just you know in a little circle they're not six feet apart they're talking i mean if we don't all do it you know i the last thing i would hate to see is it go across the country the way this happened you know hopefully it'll yeah. be stopped you know but i still see people not doing what they're supposed to. so you you talked about it like for one second on here but what so you had they wanted you to wear a fat suit and when you started filming sopranos well, yeah, when I started on Sopranos, uh, the, I, I came in the second episode of the second season. My first scene was with Tony, Silvio, 
Pauly and uh, Big Pussy, and I had a big fat suit on. They made it. Julia Polster made it. They yeah. Had, it was a big, stupid thing. And then the second year, uh, they got they had one, like a Broadway customer make me one. It was a nicer one. And then I was getting ready to get fitted again for clothes the fourth season, and David saw me, and I guess he thought I got fat enough, and he <laughs> said, yeah, she can't, Juliet came down. You don't need that anymore. I said, okay. So when, when, that how, could do it to you. How does that work? Do you, as soon as they yell cut, do you take it off? Do you leave it on all day? No, oh, you couldn't take it off. And then the it wrapped around me. It was, I, I couldn't take it off. It was hot in there, you know. Oh. Uh, so you leave it on all, all day? All like day if, long it was on. If they gave you lunch for an hour, do you take it off then? Uh... I don't think I took it off. Because it's under your clothes. It's under the clothes. Right? I would have to get all dressed and, you know, you stepped into it. You know, it was like that. It wasn't yeah. like a thing where they zip up. You had to step into it. This so that was a pain in the ass. It was hot. But I never told anyone. Like, even if I did an interview, hello. This is Jack. What's happening? I'm not done yet. <laughs> hey, Clutter. Uh, I shaved his head. By there way. you go. Oh, Really? <laughs> Mm-hmm. He's like he's the guy that like has his hair cut every month, and like it, it was just getting all sorts of weird. And he's like, "Fuck it, shave it." And so I we Facetime his barber and I shave it. Sorry, off topic. That's all right. There's no <laughs> topics here. What topic? <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I wore the fat suit. I actually have one of them. Uh, oh, I okay. bought it at the end. I have one in my garage in Laguna. I have in a like a box. Yeah, it's in a box. I ha- I have one. Yeah. I'm like out and bronzed. No, yeah, yeah, it's bronzed in my living room. No, it's yeah, <laughs> you got to try it on like chicks do with their wedding. I dress. should, and then you cry because it still fits. I still, I should put that on and post it. Yeah, I I'm always wonder it. if that's, and you brought it up. I wonder if you guys have anything from set that you took or that you bought because I, I'm, I like to collect memorabilia because I'm a huge dork. Yeah, but uh, do you guys have anything, or Steve, do you have any more stuff that you had? I have uh, the fat suit. I have the clothes when they killed Bobby off in. I have that. Uh, I have some clothes. I have a bunch of scripts also. So yeah. Both yeah. You got to go. When you want to buy the suit, do you do you go to wardrobe and be like, hey, can I buy yeah. this? Or do you just go to the director? I mean, how does that work? Oh, yeah, at the end, they had, a, they had a sale. I don't know. Did you guys buy anything? Yeah. I, I only have a sweatshirt. Yeah, like I just remember it being like, this is the coolest oversized question I've always wanted. I never found it. And Juliet at the end was gave it to me because I just kept talking about like, how did you find this vintage sweatshirt? But I, I don't have anything else. I feel like Meadow's storyline changed so much and she lived. In, so I didn't have anything I was like attached to that was hers. Um, so, yeah, beyond that sweatshirt, that's it. Robbie, you don't have anything? A Slipknot poster, Rob, or? <laughs> no, I, I had those in my room. I didn't need fucking, uh, AJ's, but the the not to be like oh, try to sound like pajama pants. But the, really, the only thing I took was all of AJ's pajama pants. Like oh, that's he, funny, really. Yeah, yeah, because I would have like there were times where AJ was like depressed and all the time. And he was just walking around in pajama pants, and I remember like my whole life, even back then, like I just loved being around my apartment, pajama pants. Like, I would wear them out to the yeah. store and everything. So I remember when they had that wardrobe thing like you were talking about, they gave me a bag, and they were like, just take whatever you want from AJ stuff. And I just took yeah. all the Yeah. Oh, nice. You That's know, I, so cute. I, I uh, at an auction, I, I, I did an auction for uh, – Lorraine Bracco, what's Lorraine Bracco's sister and Aiden Quinn? She's married to Aiden Quinn. And they had a charity. They asked me to do the auction. And they auctioned off a Tony Soprano's suit from one of the episodes. And it went for twenty grand, $20,000, a pinstripe suit. This is years ago um, while the show was yeah. on, you know? Yeah. That's crazy. I can't – so – also, you, I remember I did your show. You had a show with uh, Beth O, Howard Stern's yeah. one that I did a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, doing that? Casino Cinema. Casino Cinema. Yeah. It was, uh, we played poker. We played, uh, we played poker. We played casino games. And then they had the, 
you know, crappy movies, the interstitial, but it was a lot of fun. We had a lot yeah. of guests, a lot of people did it, a lot of really good people did it, and we lasted three years. That was wow. pretty good. Do you know some? I lived in Vegas for 25 years. Both my wife and my daughters were born there. I don't know how to play poker. I hosted uh, Face the Ace on NBC, a poker show. They had to send someone to my apartment to teach me. <laughs> I did not know, and I had wore an earpiece, and they were telling me what to say. I hosted that thing on Spike TV. I know how to play blackjack. That's the only thing I know how to play. I don't know how to shoot craps. I don't know anything except blackjack. But I don't think people realize what a skill, like, g g reading off a teleprompter is. And you were fucking great. That I could, that I could do. Well, you I've done a lot real, of it. Real good. Like, they would come, because there would be a lot of stuff to talk about, because it would be like, okay, we're going to talk about the movie. Then we're going to cut in. You guys are going to be playing poker, this. And Steve, I would see Steve take a piece of paper, look at it one time, like a whole thing, and then they'd be like, all right, now we're going to go. And you would just fucking crush it. That, the, the teleprompter to me, I caught, I picked that up, you know. That was pretty easy, but yeah. I don't know how to play poker. Did you love doing that show, that Casino Cinema? It was great, man. It was great. It was a lot of fun. I mean, we had all kinds of guests. We had, like, D-list guests, and then you had, I mean, you know, you had uh, Kurt Russell came on and Emmy Rossum, and we had all the guys from the show on, and, I mean, all these great people. I, I interviewed Matt Damon, Matthew McConaughey. I, uh, I interviewed Leonardo DiCaprio came on. Oh, you know, wow. I, all That's these so people, cool. Michael Chiklis. And then you had like some broken down, you know. Robert Eiler. Some, some old playboy girl that wrote a book or something. You know, you had all kinds of, you know. Right. And what, I, saw, well, I, was, I saw something that you two did a game show together. Is that right? the pyramid? Yeah. Hey, she's great. She's really good. I mean, you're really I good. Do. I I like I lock in in games like that. I'm like, hey, I'm not bad, and I couldn't beat you. I did you're pretty not good, bad. but you, you were like, you come on. Know. There was like one or two that I was like, come on, Steve. Listen, I've never seen Star Wars in my life. Okay, and then it was, and then it was but the other one was like Serena Williams or yeah, something. Yeah, but I, like I, that. I, you know, I, I knew that, but I screwed that up. I, can you guys, yeah. can you guys explain to people what the game show was? It was Pyramid, and I've done it a few times. I used to do it years ago, during the Soprano years, before I was making uh, good money. Yeah, I used to do that, and they used to pay yeah. pretty good. Donnie, they pay pretty good, us, and I would go out there, and I was. Pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. I got to the, uh, you know, the circle a few times. But then I did it last year against Jamie. Uh, the, year the year before I did it, the girl was fantastic. She was from uh, Reba McIntyre's sitcom. I forget her name. Peter. Uh, oh, Melissa. She's great. She's great. She so is great. great. I like to see you and her play against each other. Then you, oh, I, mean, yeah. I can't catch a break. I need like a dumb guy. Like Deion Sanders was really dumb. <laughs> he might be a great athlete, but he was dumber than dumb. I could beat him. <laughs> so I, I didn't win. I'm supposed to do it this year again. They, oh, they, good. It was uh, so fun. I need to get a, you know, someone, a dummy. But yeah, I blew a few. I, 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 I fell apart. I got rattled. I got rattled. <laughs> so you two were on the same team? No. No, we, we played play against, against each, each other. other. I oh. beat him. That's what we're saying. And what's the whole point of the game? What do you have to do? You win somebody. Uh, you guess you got to give a clue. Right. You so never you win saw someone. Pyramid? Well, yeah, but I'm saying for people who are watching this who don't know what we're talking about. Okay, so, so you know, you get, you're playing with a contestant, and then they switch. Jamie plays with, like, the guy. I'll play with the girl. And you give a clue. So, you know, you're saying, you know, name uh, name what kind of coffee comes to your head. Starbucks. What kind of donut? Dunkin' Donut. You know, that kind of thing. But right. it's you got a word as the person that says it out. And you have to try and get them to say the word by giving clues. And there's an audience. And, you know, you get a little screwy. You're going fast. There's a clock. Yes. It's not yes. so easy. You don't want to make an answer yourself. It's hard. I have a feeling we're going to be playing that. When we get back in the pajama pants studio, we got to play Pyramid. Play Pyramid. Oh, Jamie, it's so fun. I'm so, so down to that. beat your ass. She's really good. She's like a pro. 
You you have I love like, shit like that. I feel like your voice is so like recognizable. Have you done a lot of voiceover stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I was a voice of uh, McDonald's Lemon for for a couple of years. I've done a bunch of cartoons. I've done American Dad. I've done uh, you know a, a voice of a Gingerbread Man, a sock. <laughs> you know, I've done pretty good. I was a voice of a dog a sock. that, that had cousin. gas. Stoker. Dokalex, the dog had gas. I was that. <laughs> you know, they come in waves. It's really hard. But I've done a bunch, you know. Uh, I've done uh, cool. a couple of movies. I did a Pixar. I had a little little something in a Pixar Oh, movie. fine. Yeah. So you do know? you uh, – I forgot what I was just getting. Oh, so when, you, when you're the lemon in McDonald's, how do you – do you audition <laughs> for that? What does that like, mean? Well, the McDonald's had this lemon, so I was the voice of it. They would – they were, uh, it was a new a drink. It was a new oh. drink, you know? So yeah, you go in your audition and, uh, now they do a lot of it. You audition on the phone, right? Right. But right. Then you go to the studio. Even now you go, you audition, uh, they call you back. You know, you got to jump through a bunch of hoops three or four times. McDonald's got to, you know, uh, okay. It. I was the voice of a house for Ohio energy. You got to audition. You never auditioned for the voiceover? Yeah, I have. You, I'm times. sure you have. Robert, this will be right up your alley. Well, I think. <laughs> oh, here we go. There I you go. You, We've gotten a bad rap. We've become synonymous with dud, reject, flop, failure, <laughs> bus. Anything defective is a lemon. Never mind that people love to squeeze us and we're a favorite among aromatherapists. Introducing the McCafe Frozen Strawberry Lemonade from McDonald's. Now we're the bee's knees. We're tart, tangy, and even sweet when you mix in the strawberries. Oh yeah, how do you like me now? <laughs> this is so good. Here you go. Oh, there's more. You know. People think I'm sour. But what can you expect when you consider my family tree? I had an uncle who was zested into a tartlet. <laughs> my brother could only find work as a garnish. <laughs> but that was before I met my perfect match and became new McCafe frozen strawberry lemonade. Now I'm tank, juicy. People love me. How sweet is that? Oh, so good. You just came out there. Yeah, you. After you're done here, go get yourself a new McCafe frozen strawberry lemonade. It's sweet, strawberry. it's tangy, and it's cool. Go on, try one. Or else, I'll put the squeeze on you. Wait, nice. Kasim, Kasim, can you find one more thing? Can, what was the thing with the egg basket that you did, Steve? Oh, uh, with Tim and Eric. Oh, you Wait, I'm on a Tim and Eric show right now. They're crazy. Yeah, I did one for them too. They're funny. They're funny. It's one of my favorite. When I the first time my I age. saw that, it was one of the. F I laughed. Rob, I feel like you sent it to me. I, I definitely did. I laughed forever when I saw that. Yeah. So you were so good. And can you? What is it called? My eggs. It was called my eggs, and I did it a number of years ago. And it was, you know, they do these crazy sketches. Yeah, they had this silly idea, and they contacted me, and it was funny, you know. Uh, that the first time I saw that because I had no idea it was coming, and someone sent that to me, and I was crying watching it. Yeah, they're, they're, okay. I remember you sent it to me; you were dying. They're funny guys, and then I did uh, another crazy. You know, sometimes I like to do stuff. It's like you know, you're never going to do this again. Eric Andre show. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that's them too, right? Don't he's, they produce that? Oh, maybe they do. I mean, he's insane. <laughs> oh my god! By the way, that when my husband and I first started dating, he sat me down to watch it. I remember being like, "What is this?" <laughs> and then I got hooked, and I love it. Crazy, crazy, crazy! But I did that. What did he do with you? Oh uh, well, the interview was like forty-five minutes. Well, you, you only see three minutes of it, you know, and uh, I was I had the sauce then and he had a naked uh, PA stick his salami in my sauce and was running around with it. It was disgusting. <laughs> and I was afraid he was going to, like, put his balls on my shoulder. So I was getting paranoid like that. Yeah. It's crazy, crazy, funny.
And I didn't speak to him at all. I only spoke to him while we were doing the interview. Uh, He stunk like a billy goat. He doesn't shower or didn't shower. Smoking weed all morning. It was like nine in the morning we did this. Uh, Crazy. But very funny guy. Funny guy. Yeah. Yeah. When, when but you he, only spoke to him when it was rolling? Sorry, Rob. Only was rolling. Never said anything in between. It was wow. so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Not like, hey, how you doing? Let's no. do this. He had oh, a bunch of liquor, put liquor in the room, Sm- smelled like weed, like a big cloud of weed, nine in the morning, and uh, it was funny. Very funny. Wow. I, would, I wouldn't expect anything else for Eric Andre. Yeah. So when you you have your own pasta sauce, what what did you why did you decide to make it like organic and try and be healthy and well of course with my wife so we added organic and Laura eats organic and uh, yeah it was healthy and it was vegan and it was kosher and we were in like three thousand stores but we grew too fast and we went out of business but no. the sauce is good we still have I still have some cases left it's really good. That's so great. speaking, you're you know you've mentioned Laura a couple times, your wife, who I love, and um, yeah, you call each other. They love you. Do you uh, do you have advice for people who are a lot because you've been married since 1989, right? Yeah. Oh, so do you have God. advice for people, uh, especially right now, who are you know locked up in their house and they feel like they're losing their mind? And I'm not saying Jamie and Cassim fall into that category, but you know, you never know. Why well, you guys not getting along? We've had moments, but well, Cassius is his first time actually living with his girlfriend. That's a very different situation to me. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta make sure she's not close. But she, uh, she may or may not have forced him to put half the money up for a house recently. But you know, yeah, yeah, Uh, yeah. Things are going great. Things are going great living together, and uh, I have no complaints. It's actually (laughs) enriched my life. Yeah, sometimes Listen, I, just I was, have to hide in the know, bathroom. It would be very difficult, I think, if I was younger, like to get into show business. But I was already married, and you know, I was forty-one when I, you know, made a living as an actor. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're going to be married thirty-one years next week. Wow! Uh, Congrats. Wow. You know, and we split our time. I'm in New York to work, but then we have a house in California. You know, uh, our daughter still lives with us. Younger one, she's in graduate school. My other daughter's getting uh, married in November. You know. Oh, life is good. Life is fine, man. I got no problems. I mean, if you're not getting along during the quarantine, well, there's a problem. We're getting along just fine. My wife, we're getting along fine. Even outside of quarantine, how do you how do you do thirty years and still stay happy and have a good time? And you know, uh, we raised our kids together. I mean, uh, if it wasn't for her, I would have went off the rails a long time ago. Uh, you, you know, you guys also seem like you really like each other. Absolutely, like I've, I've uh, always felt that about you guys. I was like, yeah, you know, pe- couples can love each other, and you see why they're together. But you, you guys really genuinely like each other as well i would rather hang out with her than anyone else that's Honestly. so apparent that's so cool you know and uh, you know and listen i travel a lot even now so we're not up each other's ass every minute so it's a little hard yeah. you, know? you know when you're yeah. together every second you know one of those like you know like you see some guys on every show they come to the set and they're here like comics. So when I used to work with comics, she used to like the guy's wife or girlfriend would come to every show every night. Come on, man. You know, yeah. give the guy a little yeah. room to do his thing. You yeah. know, and it's okay to go out with your friends a couple nights a week. You don't have to be together every moment. Where are you going? What do you mean? I'm going to the Nick game or I'm going to the Yankee game or we're going to meet my buddy. We're having dinner. I'm going to meet Michael. We're having dinner, have a few drinks. That's what it is. Too much is no good. You got to, that's my opinion. You got to, you know, arm's length. You're together, but you don't have to be every moment, everywhere, you know? Yeah. If you live with your best friend for 30 years, that wouldn't be easy. You, he would get on your nerves, or so, right? Or, or she, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like Jamie's the only person who doesn't get on my nerves. There you go. You, you should always move in. say that. Maybe you should move okay. in. 
I see. Yeah, well, well, I, yeah. I gave it, I offered it to him day one of quarantine. Did well, I not, Rob? Good. I'm pretty well, big happy family. Rob hasn't seen a human being in weeks. Oh, well, how do you yeah. get your food? Rob, you just order in? Yeah, I order from, I just order uh, groceries and I cook. Okay. So that's okay. You're being safe. I got no problem with yeah. that. You have a little balcony there, right? Yeah, yeah. I go out there. I, uh, I've, I've left my apartment three times in the last month. That's it. You know what? I don't think that's a problem, man. So what? You're, You're doing being your safe. Part. Yeah. You know? I'm trying. The, so one of my favorite things about you, too, that people definitely don't know is you were not a guy who's like, oh, I'm going to get an iPhone and I'm going to text everybody. You were you stuck with the flip phone. Show, yeah. Huh. <laughs> and that's I feel like since I last saw you, that's even kind of high tech for you. A little high tech. I get email now. <laughs> yeah. I can actually get email. So how did, oh. why are you one of those people who doesn't that's want like my dad? You know, you want to know what? I don't, uh, I don't, all I do is text and all I do is talk. Okay. I'm not going to give you like a big giant, you know, right. uh, conversation. How you doing? How you doing? All that. Even on email, you know, if it gets too, you know, I'll answer your question. If it gets too much, call me, we'll talk. I'm not, you know, a 12 year old girl and I'm texting, you know, you want to talk, let's yeah. talk. Uh, I don't take pictures, you know, I don't take pictures. I don't do all that stuff. So that's all I need. I actually have two backups because they're going to, they might be obsolete soon. So I have two brand new of these just in case. Oh, wow. Smart, yeah. Holding out. I and they're, it. they're telling me, get the iPhone, get the iPhone. I, if I don't have to, I don't. I don't need another headache in my life. Too much complication. I respect it. My dad was the same, and then we got him an iPhone, and now he can't be stopped. Like, oh, he see? does not monster. stop taking pictures and sending them to you all day. <laughs> like, How's like, your mom and dad doing? They're all right? They're great. Thank you. Yeah, they're really good. And Robert, how's your uncle? Good. Everybody's Everybody's doing good. They're just dealing with, you know, the corn Bad times we'll get through yeah. it, man. We'll get through yeah. it. Bad yeah. times hang in there, you guys. But like but I was picked a great yeah. time. Sorry, you picked a great time to start a podcast. I feel like everyone yes. all the time now. Well, we were working on it for about six months, you know. Oh wow. Uh, oh, and it cool. just, you know, we were a little reluctant to do it with what's going on. And then uh, you know, it's been going, it's been going pretty well. Uh you know, you could get it, Talking Sopranos, you know, wherever you get it. It's on YouTube. It's on, uh, you go to TalkingSopranos.com oh, cool. and all that stuff. And uh, Jamie, I look forward to talking to you this week. Robin, me thanks too. for coming on. Yeah, thank you. But before you go, can you answer me one thing? You were, sure. in, you were in my favorite movie. You were in Casino, right? I had a, listen, if you slow it down uh. and turn the volume <laughs> way up, yeah. <laughs> you hear me in the scene where Pesci stabs the guy with a pen. You hear me yell, Joey, look out, look out. Uh, That's it. Frank Vincent helped me. He was in that scene. He helped me get my sad card, him and Pesci. Cool. So they, I, that's where I got my sad card. But oh, that's I auditioned, though. I did audition for a different role. I auditioned for Scorsese and De Niro. And then they gave me, you know, kind of threw me a bone and, they said, throw a few lines out, and, and that was it. Oh, that's great. Yeah. One a line hell of a first movie time. to get your sad card. Yeah. that's. But thank thank you for coming thank on. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming, Steve. Oh, it was great thank meeting you. Happy to see you. We'll see you soon. You take care. All right, we'll you, see you too. Soon. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Yeah, make sure you guys check out his podcast, Talking Sopranos. It's available on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And Rob's on it this week, right? We're, it's probably going to come out in a couple weeks, yeah. A couple weeks. Oh, okay. I thought they were coming around the same time. Rob is coming up on it, and Jamie will be on it. And, uh, yeah. You guys I'll... notice I tried to dye my hair purple? I thought I saw something. Oh, I thought that was just my monitor. Did no. you? Mm -hmm. where, where did you? Wait, I did a terrible. Can we do a little five, ten minute catch up? You I got a pee. I, I, I did a right terrible back. job. So what, why did you, where did you get the hair dye? Why did my you friend, it? my friend that's a hairdresser just sent it to me to like have some fun. Uh, but I, I knew I was doing a bad job while I was doing it. And we were putting in solar panels today. So we had no power. 
So I didn't think it would affect the shower right away for some reason. So I got in the shower like, and I was expecting to warm up and it never did. So I took a freezing cold shower wow. and I just didn't leave it on. And then I had a 1030 podcast for my mama said. And so I had to like rush out. So I, and I haven't even cleaned the shower since. I don't even want to know what that looks like. So how- and I have to get ready for Easter tonight for them and like make their baskets and shit. You got the responsibility never ends. Like the, I've been trying to scrub the, these two bathrooms for like four days, and I just can't find the time or energy to do it. How's Mama said going? It's going good. We um, <clears throat> we've been zooming a lot, and this will. When is this going to come out? I think next week. Next Monday, yeah. Not this. Okay, so. I can say we're releasing on Wednesday. We came up with an IGTV drinking game called Are You Smart Enough to Homeschool? And basically we Zoom with like a celebrity parent or like a couple, like Nick and Vanessa Lachey just did it for us. Damon Wayne Jr. is doing it on Tuesday. And we ask them 10 basic out like grade school level questions. And for everyone they get wrong, they have to take a shot. And then at the end, we donate to like a COVID relief charity on their behalf. And we've shot a couple of them and they're really funny. And we've like edited it really kind of cool. And we're putting that out on Wednesday. So it's actually kept me so busy. That's great. Which I think it's been hard because once I have to wait until my kids go to bed to do it because Cutter's working at Theragun. So I can't start my work until 7 p.m. And all day, I'm like cooking, doing laundry, cleaning floors, cleaning counters, cleaning bathrooms, taking care of children, homeschooling, cooking, shop, like grocery shopping, clean. Like it just literally doesn't stop. And I'm like constantly reminding myself, I'm like one of the lucky ones that just has to stay home. And that's my only job right now. But it's, it's a fucking grind, man. And then on top of it, my kids are trying to kill each other. I forgot when you said like, oh, I have to do Easter for them. It's like, I forgot that you actually still have to do so. Like, I would just be like, yo, it's, yeah. I would tell them it's Tuesday, you know, like I, I wouldn't. No, we're just like, we want to keep their timing of things and their life. And like, he so listens when we're on TV, he would hear it's Easter. And we also want to like, give them things to look forward to. Like, they're so excited for tomorrow for their baskets and their egg hunts. So like, I don't know, I have to stay up all night tonight, like fucking stuffing eggs and decorating and you should you should I mean again a- we're lucky we're lucky that we can afford it and do it but it's like just we just want to lay down you should give him some of steve sharippa's eggs <laughs> robert i forgot about that video that's so funny it is like when he's like they take three days to pass through my rectum <laughs> yeah. so I, I, my favorite was i'm only halfway there <laughs> yeah you know what he's looking at from the toilet halfway there he's like it's like, good for the environment capiche it's so it's robbie so- i still have your birthday present i think i'm gonna mail it to you because it doesn't look I like do too. You it doesn't look like we're getting right out of this anytime soon so Cass, what do you tell us what's going on with you how's how's this how's this treating you well i mean as you can see a bunch of boxes here i've wow. been busy packing up my house and uh and I'm working on a on a couple other things, but other than that, it's just kind of been, you know, trying to say goodbye to my place. No. Um. Yeah, it's not. It hasn't been too bad. It's just more of like a wonder of when we're gonna get back to normal. Um, don't you also what feel normal is gonna be. really? Don't you feel really far away from what you're seeing on the news? Because I don't know anyone like close to me affected. Mm-hmm. So it just it's. It's you like hear, a really you hear that, hard thing to you hear that, Joe Perino. <laughs> she doesn't give a shit about. Oh, I it. know. Yeah. No, I didn't mean Joe, that. Joe's you know the what example. I mean? Yeah, yeah. When but I other found than that. out, when I found out about Joe, he was already okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, but truly, if I knew he was suffering, it would be different. I I found out about it. I haven't known anyone that's been very sick, or anyone close to me that's had anyone be very sick, and so I'm seeing the devastation. And I'm understanding why we're home, but I still feel very far away from the situation. Yeah. That's all. I, you know, most everyone that's in my friend group has, they've all kind of adhered to the stay at home. 
Yeah, now, yeah, same, same. Which is good. Um, and and I think you're seeing that in the uh, statistics in California's numbers are like starting to flatten out and plateau and and hopefully go down. Um, but yeah, you know, I I just wonder. I, I I still kind of sometimes wake up in the middle of the night being like, you know, what is, you know, what's what's work going to be like? What's uh, what's oh, like yeah. hanging out going to be like? Is it going to be like this for a year, two years? I mean, there's those are all questions I'm sure everyone is wondering, and and it just the only Evan, thing everyone's going to have to like cut back in a way. It's yeah. just going to trickle down and affect everyone. I mean, I, I constantly think of that scene in Demolition Man with, with Sylvester Stallone when he like wakes up in the future after being cryogenically frozen and he goes to shake somebody's hand and then they go, oh, no, we don't do that. We just do this and like hover. Yeah, that's you know, us now. Yeah, Didn't Fauci us. say he recommends, recommends for us to never shake each other's hand again? Yeah, it's going to be that and Taco Bell's going to be the only restaurant because they win the I'm not going to get any more Robert hugs. Oh, fuck that. I don't care about COVID-19. I'm still hugging you. Okay, good. Yeah, It's going to be a crime to, like, hug somebody. I'm going to force myself on you, Robert. <laughs> get, like, you're going to get, like, uh, lasered. Uh, was it? Tasered? Yeah. You're you hug someone? You, you know get what? hug raped. Dr. Drew, uh, one of our guests, was he went to do... Oh, Howard, yeah. He went to do Howard Stern, like, right in the... When, when COVID-19 was just, like, popping off and people were stopping, shaking hands. And, that, and he was going around hugging yes. everyone in the office and shaking their hands and being like, oh, you guys are all paranoid and it's fine. And Oh, he's been under some major criticism and fire from, from uh, people online in the last week, week and a half. Because somebody made a, um, a compilation video of all the things he was wrong about regarding the coronavirus. And he essentially was underselling the severity of it. And, you know, people were upset because, you know, they feel like, People trust what he says and they take what he right. says literally. And if Dr. Drew says it's not as bad as we think it is, then it's really not that bad. But, um, you know, credit to him for coming out and saying, like, look, I was just wrong and it was early and blah, blah, yeah. blah. But uh, that's the truth. He, he so that's the, yeah. the truth. And by the way, he's always been like some, I agree, somebody I would listen to too. He's always been on the air, more air of like not fear and more just like reality. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hi. Who is it? Is it Bob? Wait, I shaved Cutter's head. Can you both come? Oh, let's or see you it. Come on, Cutter. It's Jack. He's really needing me today. You hit your head on the side of what bed? Man, this kid is hurting himself a lot. Ever Wait, since oh, I yeah. Well, well, look how he look how he was just getting up on me. It's like he's drunk. What's up, bro? Oh. You look like you. What's that movie with the oh, guy uh, with the personalities? I can't hear him. What? Oh. What's the what's that movie cast from? The movie oh, where Split? He... What is it? Split? Split, yeah. He looks like the guy from Split. Yeah, he does. Cutter, you look like the guy from Split. Oh, yeah. What movie is that again? I don't know, but he that's has... an M. Night Shyamalan joint. Dude, I almost called you the other night because my Wi-Fi stopped working and Jamie told me that you know some like shit that's going down, some conspiracies. I almost called you. Job, it's right? true. We need There's conspiracy corner talk. with Cutter. What's <laughs> what's going on, Cutter? Is it the five G? Are they all trying to track, put chips in us? What's what's the latest? So I don't fully believe in it, but I think it's yeah. totally fun to uh, to dive into. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, I just hope I just hope one of them is is true because it's yeah. all good stuff. You know, <laughs> like I I wish all of this is for something. If that makes sense. Sure. What, yeah. What's your favorite conspiracy out there right now? I mean, the favorite one would be the whole pedophile one, but I don't think that's happening. Oh, that they're doing this to round up all the pedophiles or something like that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I heard I heard that one. And I, and I also heard that, that this is Bill Gates. Uh, Bill Gates' way of microchipping everyone in the world. Right. Yeah. Which is crazy. You know, who knows? How are you handling the quarantine? It's good. Um, I think Bo. I think I think the two kids are gonna kill themselves soon. But I mean, look, I love staying home, so it's easy for me. But at the same time, uh, well, I do gotta go. Um, I gotta hop on another Zoom. But uh, I miss you guys. I hope you're well. Let Jamie get her headphones in. 
I was just saying I miss you and I hope you're well. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye, Jack. Say pajama pants. I think he's drooling. <laughs> Always. Yeah. And next. <laughs> he's such a little Chris Farley. So I, to, 1,000. I just said it to Car the other day. I was like, he's Chris Farley. You really like, is. He like his hair grows this way. Like he's always drooling as like a scratch, but like and he eats like this. <laughs> belly, he, when you take his shirt off, he just rubs like his he just rubs himself like this. That's great. Oh, yeah. All right, everyone. And he has sleeves, tattoos. You like his sleeves? Yeah, those are cool. He's amazing. It's your tattoos? All right, All I'll right. see you guys next time. Um, I have right, a whole bunch you. of emails to, to read and uh, okay. thank you guys for watching. And as always, hit the subscribe button or not. But if you do, oh, we're still so paying this out. Yeah, yeah. Just in case, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, I actually just say this even if I'm not doing a podcast. I ask people to subscribe. So it's fine. Uh, yeah. you, you end all conversations. Yeah, yeah. All right. Remember to subscribe, guys. All right. I love you. I went, to dinner, I went to dinner with Kasim in Venice, and afterwards he asked me to subscribe. I don't know what yeah, the hell he's doing. I don't know. Well, I just need all the help I can get. All right. I miss you guys. Oh, my God. All right. See you, all Bryce. Right, bye. I miss you guys so much. Bye. 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 Bye.